All right, let's get to what we're watching for in this football game. Ted, let's start with when OU's defense is on the field against Iowa State's offense. What challenges do you see Iowa State's offense bringing to this game? Uh, I think the the biggest thing for me is the athleticism at quarterback. Um, you know, Hunter Decker, he's he's not Max Duggan. He's not Adrian Martinez, but he's active. He can run the football. He can get outside the pocket. And I think that that's the one thing that can mess with you a little bit. The rest of it, is totally vanilla. I mean, it's it is plain Jane. The running game, plain Jane. You're gonna get you're gonna get split zone. And they'll block it interesting on the on the perimeter, or actually lack of blocking it on the perimeter. They don't even <laughs> block the defensive end with the split action. They just kind of influence him, which I think is a lot of the you know the quarterback keep stuff. So that's that's interesting. Um Inside zone, they'll run a little bit of outside zone, kind of a two-back look out of a staggered uh, formation in the backfield. Passing game, incredibly simple. You get uh, quite a bit of three-level. Uh, you get 98 quite a bit. That's their third down call. We used to run it with Lincoln Riley. It's the old Mike Leach. You get the crossers underneath and the hook in behind it. Um, smash seven, which is you know just the hitch, and then the, the seven route whenever they get cloud on one side, I mean, it's all from what I've seen and I haven't watched everything, but it seems fairly basic. You're you'll get motion, but it's, it's standard motion stuff. It's the, it's the, uh, H back or tight end outside of the core motioning back in, uh, to get in his final formation, a little bit of motion from the receivers across the formation, a little bit of trips into the boundary, but, it's nothing that you haven't seen and it's nothing that you should go into that game. And it's like, we can't get lined up. We can't adjust. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic that we could have a, a good day defensively. I don't think their offensive line is great. I don't think their skill position guys save Xavier Hutchinson are great. Good. Not great. I think Hunter Deckers can make some really nice throws, but he's prone to some mistake, uh, you know, in the passing game. And I don't know. I just, I, I think it kind of is what it is. What, what you see is pretty bland, not very explosive. And if you can stop the run on early downs, which a lot of people have against them, it makes it really difficult on a, a quarterback that lacks experience. Completely agree. Um, vanilla, I would even say, and I think this is fair, little predictable mm -hmm. offensively uh, for Iowa State. Now, one thing, and we're, we're not going to know until we see this game play out, is they've seen Oklahoma's defense struggle with a lot of motion, struggle with the communication aspect of things. They've had two weeks. How much have they added from a motion and shift standpoint? to to try and see if Oklahoma has corrected those mistakes. Which right? that used to be their main bread and butter. Yeah. Right? That's just an unbelievable amount of motion, formation, variations. Like right. As I watched, I was like, wait, what what happened? Did Tom Manning like just decide, you know what, that's that's too much. <laughs> like I, I don't understand. Well, I think part of it was you had a guy like Col you had those three excellent tight ends and one yeah. of them was a really good receiver so you could stay in that personnel grouping and still you know be a little more uh, versatile than I think they are right now they don't have that tight end that can do what what Kohler could yeah and I, I agree with you on the offensive line I think the interior is the strength I think their center is their best offensive lineman tackle is definitely a weakness in my opinion and and I and I've said this I'm going to continue to say it this cannot be a get right game for their run game. It needs to be a get right game for Oklahoma's run defense. Yeah. It, it, it cannot be the Sooners getting gashed by a run game that has, I mean, just has not been effective for them. So if you shut down that run game and you put Deckers 
in predictable passing situations. He's not as bad as some people think he is, but ju- and just like most quarterbacks, a lot of his mistakes come when he's under pressure. And that weakness at tackle, but you have to get him, like you mentioned, you have to get him in those situations. And guys, and I don't know if you got to dial up more pressure if you're Ted Roof and BV, but we need this defensive line to start winning more one on ones and pass rush. It, j- it just has to happen, man. I agree. And, you know, and it goes right back to what you talked about stopping the run, right? Yeah. We, we haven't been able to put offenses in predictable situations. And, that's going to be um, the biggest factor. And here's the other thing, man. I, when it comes to skill position groups, I compared to what we saw against Kansas State, especially at running back with Deuce Vaughn, Malik Knowles, Adrian Martinez at quarterback, and then TCU with Duggan, Miller, uh, DeMarcado, Quentin Johnston, like everything they've got at skill guy, then Texas, and even Kansas. Iowa State's not close to that, right? Xavier Hutchinson is, like, he he's he's the guy that is, is a comp for those other teams, but the rest of what they got, like, we should be able to win a lot of these battles on the perimeter and on the interior. So I, I totally expect our guys to be able to do that. If we don't, I see that as a problem. I I would see it as very, very alarming. And the the one guy that has had some big plays, one guy I think that does have some good speed that could be dangerous is Jalen Knoll, 13. Mm-hmm. Not a big guy, but looks like he's got some speed to him. Other than that, like, you know the ball is going Hutchinson's way. I mean, Decker's just going to find him. And I don't blame him because I think he's a really good player. But, all right, you got anything else? OU's defense, their offense? No, I – I don't think so. I think that you you just have to keep in mind that Iowa state is, uh, I know they've, they've played a ton of close games and haven't won all of them, which, you know, is, is fine. But when you play in close games, special teams is going to be a factor. That's just how it is. Like if if the score is close, a lot of times the deciding factor is going to come down to uh, either who makes the the plays or who makes the big mistakes in special teams. Well, if that's the case, I like the Sooners' chances because yeah. Iowa State, for whatever reason, they stink on special teams. It's Which is it is, it's quite the mystery. So it's hopefully that ends their up formula work whenever you don't play well in special teams. It, yeah, I mean it's it's got to be confusing. Okay, let's talk some OU offense against that Iowa State defense. Uh, everyone knows by now, uh, John Haycock invented as far as we know that three, three, five structure of defense, that three safety stuff, and no one plays it better than they do structurally. Now there's a lot of teams playing this style that have better players, but no one plays it more disciplined and more efficiently than Iowa state, which when you look at what Oklahoma's offense has to do to have success You have to run the football. It is essential in this game, and it's not going to be easy, right? Iowa State, they got the number one rush defense in the Big 12. But from watching uh, Baylor and Texas specifically, right, I think OU's best course of action is perimeter run game. And I feel like we've said that quite a bit now Mm -hmm. this year, but the GT counter that's been hitting wider, um, that front side guard, that G pole with the backside tight end leading around that's hit wider. That stuff has been good. It needs to be good in this game. Uh, Ted, I do not know how much money I would pay for OU to run outside zone like Baylor does, but it's a lot, man. It's so it's, <laughs> it's beautiful to watch. I mean, it's beautiful. And they had some really effective outside zone runs uh, against Iowa state when those two team plays and especially a lot of stuff where, you know, they're pressing the front side and that backside cut, uh, you know, cutback lane really, really opened up. So I, I would love to be able to come on here and say, Hey, I think they can go inside zone and run it right at them and knock them off the ball. I, 
I do not think that's the best course of action. I think perimeter run game, attack the edges of the defense. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think so, too. You know, another thing that is interesting, like, I don't know that tempo is your friend against this defense because of how easy it is for them to get lined up. Everything's and balanced, right? I mean, everything's balanced. no matter what you throw at them, their structure for the most part, unless you throw some really funky stuff, the structure is going to look the same. Like they go stand where they stand. Yep. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I guess like if you start to have success in the running game, it's more of like a, it's a gas tank thing for the defensive line and those backers that are fitting than it is anything else. But I, I you're, you're probably not going to get them misaligned. Uh, you're probably just like, almost hurting yourself if you do that to some degree but I agree with you uh I think some perimeter run is there I think um I think some quarterback run stuff is probably going to be a factor in there also and I I continue to say that I I hope they at least for a handful of snaps do some of the wildcat stuff whatever package it is whether it's it's your kind of your heavy package with Braden Willis or just some of the easier direct snap to the running backs. I, I think that needs to continue to be a part of what you do. Yeah. And a couple more run game thoughts, Eric gray, he's going to have some one-on-one -on -one situations with their middle safety, Bo Freiler, uh, number 17. I got a feeling Eric gray is going to make that guy miss a few times. Yep. Just a feeling. I, I think that could be a, a bit of an athletic mismatch. And, and one of the, one of the reasons I really like the perimeter run game. Have you seen their their bike backer Vance? Yeah, I mean he's he's played a ton of football for him. He's he's got to be like two sixty, maybe two sixty five right now. Like he is not running well, but he looks huge on yeah. tape. He's he's like a six year guy, I think. Right? Yeah. I, think, I think he's a six year guy. He's been there a long time. Uh, smart I don't think guy, they run but... particularly well at backer. No, 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 no. I don't think they're, you know, aside from a, a handful of guys, I don't know just how athletic overall they are. But, you know, whenever you – everyone plays their role, plays – and does it right, you know, you can still play excellent defense. And I think you're right with Eric Gray making, uh, you know, some guys miss. That's what makes this whole thing work is they're, they tackle excellently and they yes. have – for a, a bunch of years and that's the real key to it i mean it, it's no different than anything else like if if your guys miss those one-on-ones on good backs like eric gray then you're gonna look bad just like everyone else looks bad so that's like if if eric gray can start to make some of those guys miss in those like we got a hat on a hat here's the unblocked guy it's up to you to to get the the positive yards and he can he can uh make those guys whiff then we're in for a good day yeah, and well, one of the keys to getting the run game going, and I know this may be a little niche and it's kind of hard to watch as you're watching the game, but the offensive line has to play with good pad level because technically, I and, and you you look at their defensive line, I think Will McDonald is a good player. I I think he's a little overhyped. Mm -hmm. I, I I just he's too hot and cold for me, especially against the run. Guy just jumps out of his gap, like doesn't fight double teams sometimes. It's like he he doesn't play the run as well as I want him to play it, basically is what I'm saying. But you look across the board for them for the most part, their guys play with really good technique, and they play with really good pad level. And a couple of them are short, so they got that naturally built in, right? But that is that is how they get it done at the point of attack. Great hands. Great pad level, great leverage. OU's offensive line has to match that, right? Or else you're not going to get any movement at the point of attack, right? Low man wins. We've yeah. all heard it before. So OU's O line, they got to play low and they got to strain. I mean, you can't get tired of straining in this game because you know exactly what you're signing up for four quarters when you're playing this football team. I think you remember 2020 when we went up there and we're watching them warm up and 
one of the dudes, one of the nose guards was like, he was like 5'10", 285 pounds. And we're looking at him like, who? I think he was one, he was the younger brother of another guy, I think, right? One, of another defensive lineman. Anyways, like whenever he was in the game, it was like, <laughs> it was like trying to block a boulder. He went absolutely nowhere. Now, he didn't disengage or make any plays, but he could absolutely hold point. It's, I, it it goes to the point you're talking about, like, they've got a couple of guys in there that just, they anchor down, and if you can't get much movement there, then it makes things really difficult on you. you got to be able to find a way to get some guys moved off the football and get them going laterally a little bit, and that's where you can kind of take advantage of them. That's that's why you I think you like the some of the outside stuff. So, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. And if you can run it efficiently – you're going to be in good shape because this team, you talk about coming downhill on play action. I mean, if the backers think it's run, they are flying. Not really flying. They are. They're moving at a kind of slow pace <laughs> downhill. But I, I, the play action stuff, some stuff in the middle of the field in the RPO game, like if you're running it efficiently, you can you can make some money with that stuff because they, they do bite hard, you know, whatever of the three safeties is in the run pit, like they're coming downhill if they feel run. So that goes back to pad level. It goes back to playing well and efficiently with your run game. But I do think there can be quite a bit of space created for Dylan Gabriel to hit some of those intermediate throws, especially in the middle of the field. Yep. No, I agree. I agree a hundred percent. Um, you know, that just kind of, for me is the real question mark, just generally speaking about this game, Dylan Gabriel's never played this defense. Jeff Levy's never called against this defense. He's called against three, three fives, but he's never called it against Iowa state's defense. Now I know there's guys offensively on staff that have been here and have, have a, high level of experience with this team. But that's one of the things that worries me is trying to do too much against this defense. You have to just take what they give you. They are begging you to get anxious, to try and make something happen, to feel like, you know, you got to hit on a big play and you've got to to create something explosive. And that's whenever they take advantage of you. You have to just continue to take what they give you, be methodical, be okay with the, the, you know, the four or five yard running plays, getting to third and short. That's, that's how you have to beat them is if you start to throw it on first down and get in and you're incomplete and you're looking at second 10, you can just forget it, right? Might as well punt the football and start over next time. So that's what has me worried about this game is just the experience playing against it. Yeah. Now, I will say, as far as potential big plays, if number 19 gets on the field for Iowa State, go after that guy. If I see it, I know they see it. Yeah, 19. Remember that number if you see him out there on the field. But I – and we talk about every year when this game rolls around, like wide receiver blocking is super important. Like you have to match the physicality on the perimeter, whether that's the quick screen stuff, the bubble stuff. Uh, being at the point, some of those run concepts, because the way that they spin some things in the back end like, makes it really challenging for wide receivers to go dig guys out in some of those run game concepts. But you're right, man. Dylan Gabriel's got to be good. Bottom line, uh, got to make good decisions with the football. Has to be patient. Has to be accurate. Like if he sails any of those throws, we've seen him sail in some of these concepts. They're going to catch it. Uh, they got a ton of guys back there. But one thing that I'm interested to see is how disciplined is he with his eyes? Because as you watch this defense and they do a tremendous job of it, they are really good at moving in the back end with what the quarterback is doing with their eyes. I mean, you could tell they're extremely well coached when it comes to that. Can Dylan Gabriel play with dif dif disciplined eyes? And actually, can he use them as a weapon in the passing game 
to create some holes in those zones by moving guys with the, with his eyes. Like that is, that is an advanced level of quarterback play, but the guys played a lot of football. I'm interested to see, you know, how many times is he looking one way and then he comes back with a quick throw to the other side because he knows how he can affect the defense with where he's looking. We'll, we'll see, but that's, that's something that he's got to do to create some of those holes in those deep zones. Yep. And you got to trust your offensive line. If that, if, if like yeah. that's the, that's the critical thing there for a quarterback, a lot of quarterbacks start to stare it down because they know it's got to come out quick and just don't have the trust or feel like they have the time to be able to, you know, pull the defense to one side with the eyes and then come back and snap, throw it the other direction. So offensive line's got to, because Iowa state's always been good at number one, creating pressure with just a three man rush and two, disguising when they're coming all out pressure and when they're not. And uh, if you feel like it's coming and you drop back and you got that, the clock is sped up and they're, they're just rushing three and there's eight guys dropping. You've already, you know, clouded the picture of what you're going to see back there and you panic, make mistakes.